If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this super revealing episode Whoa. of Mind Pump. Almost naked. For the first 36 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. Six-week contest is over. Oh, Who won? Boy. We talk all about it in this episode. Uh, forum members are going to help us figure out the winner. Yeah. Learn all about it. If you're not intro. on there. You're missing out. Then we talk about Justin reintroducing foods yeah. after his diet. He may be reintroducing them too quickly. Too quick. Got a backpedal. Got a backpedal. Uh, he's going to be using the Organifi green juice to get vegetables slowly mm. back into his system. We are sponsored by Organifi. They do make these single-serve packets of green juice, which are amazing for vacation or travel. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and enter the code Mind Pump, you'll get 20% off. We went into the details of the contest. Then we talked about our new sponsor, Ned. Ned. Hey, Ned. Ned. Ned makes high quality hemp extract products which with have which have good high doses of canna- cannabinoids like CBD. Lots of health benefits. We talk about that in this episode. They are again one of our new sponsors. If you go to hello ned, that's h e l l o n e d.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Then we get into the questions. The first question was after seeing your transformation results, how the hell did you guys manage to build muscle while losing body fat? Mm. I've always thought that with a calorie deficit, it would be a given to lose size if you aren't a new lifter. Was it magic or was it maps? Listen, <laughs> we're professionals at the end of the day. Exactly. Find out in this part of this episode. Also, Justin did mention ButcherBox when we were answering that question. Yeah. We're also sponsored by them. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get free bacon two ribeyes, $10 off, and free shipping on your first order. It's a no-brainer. The next question was, can you explain the difference between focus sessions and trigger sessions? Now, both of these concepts are found in our MAPS programs. We break them down for you so you can kind of use them yourself. You don't even have to enroll in MAPS to take advantage of how effective they can be at getting your body to change, Uh, but we kind of break it down. The next question was, what are our thoughts on alternative ways to educate children such as homeschooling. Homeschooling seems to be growing over the past five years, and we have a nice little discussion in that part of this episode. Get hit him with a ruler at home, right? That's right. Yeah. And the final question, do you guys suffer from male PMS? (laughs) Do we have any thoughts on this? Apparently there's something (laughs) called male... Is this like a real thing, or is this just some funny question? Does that fall under my moody category? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, the real question was, does Adam suffer... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But yeah, do we... What do we think about male moodiness or PMS? Uh... Good, good part of the episode. Uh, also, I do want to mention all of our MAPS programs and bundles. You can find all of them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. We also have bundles on there. For example, we have like the Sexy Athlete Bundle, the Businessman Bundle. RGB still in there. Yeah, we have the Starter Bundle. We have the Get Shredded Fast Bundle. There's all these different kind of bundles where we combine multiple MAPS programs and discount them. New bundles, all kinds of new products. Mm mapsfitnessproducts.com go check it out t-shirt time and it's t-shirt time oh yeah t-shirt time all right we have back to back busy weeks here on our itunes 30 reviews wow hell yeah and eight shirts going out love it so the winners are scott m roth dad bod j kurth julie lifting my best life tyler studer Andrew Boone, Bad News Kenny 88, and Connor 53. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Well, contest, oh. contest is over, boys. Oh, who already did the ma- <laughs> who did the most damage after the contest? Cont- oh, yeah. Do I even need to say a name? It's me. <laughs> did you really? What'd you do? What'd you do? Oh, I hurt he- myself. <laughs> Wait a minute, what do you mean? Well, I drank I drank a lot Saturday and I told actually I was texting Adam back and forth. It was kind of funny because I was like, dude, I'm drinking tonight, bro. Like it's going down. Cause like there was just I, I don't know. There there was just a lot of pent up like energy and like my wife was like, Can we please like go out, do something, you know, normal? Like she she hates when I'm dieting. Anyways. Well, especially the diet you were on too. Yeah, yeah. It's like she's just like almost like always with the meat. 
you know, it's like, like you can't have anything else. I get it, you know. So anyway, so we, yeah, we we let our hair down quite a bit, and then I also had, uh, like, I had, I kept with the meat thing. I had some burgers and everything, but I had um, these thin these thin um, buns that that I thought wouldn't do too much damage. But even just that, dude, oh my god, like I was hurting. My stomach was just bloated. And you're gonna be more day, sensitive, dude. Oh. Your microbiome was totally different. Oh, yeah. it, it wrecked me. So I'm, and then so Sunday I did like just steaks and and white rice, and then I felt great. And then you're okay. Yeah. Have I'm you tried stick with that for a while? Have you tried vegetables to see how that affects you? Yeah. So that was the other one I threw in. I had uh, green beans and Brussels sprouts, and so I don't know if like maybe the Brussels sprouts. I was trying to like I shouldn't have added it all at once. You know, and then <laughs> alcohol on top of that. <laughs> so when you go, when you go back, maybe when, the alcohol. I you think up. it's maybe the alcohol. <laughs> yeah, maybe so I'll tease that one out. So you're taking off on your trip right now. Do you plan to reintroduce vegetables consistently and so that? Like, what's your plan? Yeah, yeah. So I want to, I want to do that because uh, I, I want to go out to eat and experience, um, you know, the the food there and everything. So I'm definitely going to eat a lot of meat dishes. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to add like uh, vegetables you, for sure. You know what by, might be a good way to slowly do that is uh, the green juice, the Organifi green juice, because it's already pre-digested, you know, oh, powder. Yeah. No, I, I was telling you guys, like, that was... Will that be easier on him because it's already, it's processed like that? It'll be easier? Theoretically. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's 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 freeze-dried and crushed, so it's pre-digested, basically. Mm -hmm. Shake it, mix it up in water. It's a small amount. It's not a huge amount of, of vegetables. It might be a it might be a, a way to kind of ease. You know what, that never, makes sense. I have those single packs that they have for the travel packs, so I was already going to throw that into my suitcase. Have you had so. one at all? No, I haven't. Yet? I haven't this oh. whole time. I haven't had any Organifi. So okay, that might be a neat because you can mix it, try one of those, wait a few hours, see how you feel. Yeah, and see if you're see if you're now. All good. Do we lose any of the fiber because you, it's processed like that? Yeah, like mm -hmm. all of it, or you is lose there... a lot. I think you lose quite a bit of it. I mean, it's it's not. I mean, a packet really represents a small amount of. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a high amount of nutrient dense. It's type condensed, vessels, but, but yeah, you lose the fiber. Yeah, a but little it's bit. pre digested, so yeah. theoretically, it should be easier to you know to absorb. To assimilate. Yeah, I, I I agree. I think that is a smart strategy. I, I think I'm going to do that for sure, and then you know uh, ease my way back into it too, because I know I'm <laughs> I'm not putting like a whole lot of. Uh, you know, barriers out there food wise and drink wise. Like I'm not going to go crazy, but at the same time, like I'm going to be drinking whiskey and, you know, like I'm when in Rome, you know, like, <laughs> come on, dude. You know, like that was the thing. I was a little worried because this competition and everything uh, was basically led directly up to me, like leaving from then. So I was a little worried. Well, what did, what You're did coming you... back so fast. You know? <laughs> I'm just going to promote oh, up like a fucking... Uh, Oompa Loompa. Well, you got your nice spray tan ready for your vacation. Uh, you know, I'm, I'll be the tannest. <laughs> I'm going to be the tannest guy in Scotland, dude. Just, you know, in a kilt and like bronze legs. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. What, what, how much percent did you lose from for the six week contest when we went and did the measure? What was your total percent? 3.3% body fat. So you dropped 3%. Three, yeah. Three, three. Yeah. And uh, I was actually like. And your weight didn't change a whole not lot. Not a whole lot. I thought for sure I was yeah, heavier I thought, going I thought in. You said you were down 15, 20 pounds. And then I remembered I lost weight kind of leading into the competition. Oh, you fucked up. Yeah, you exactly. should have gone in there full I, fat. I, I didn't I didn't <laughs> sandbag at all. Yeah. I already started early like an idiot. Yeah. So but yeah, that was that was surprising to me. But I actually was happy about that because I, I didn't want to lose like a lot of weight and I was trying really hard to gain muscle through the experience. Well, I anticipated that was you know, I remember I think I called that. I anticipated you to to lose a bunch of muscle too. Oh. I thought for sure Justin is going to especially when you were saying like fifteen pounds, like if he's down fifteen pounds, I'm like, it's inevitable. Yeah. You're gonna lose. But a he little. was counting what he lost before. Yeah, what right. I lost before, which was yeah, I was like at but two thirty, but yeah, I'd slowly been well, losing weight. I don't know, man. I will tell you what, the the cause we all took pictures, right? We all have these before and afters. And there's six weeks and so you know, there's only so much you can do in a six week period. But your before and after looks pretty fucking good. Dramatic. Yeah, it was okay. Like I was impressed with you guys. Like, to, like that's the thing, dude. Like, it, I, I, it, like Doug looked amazing. We'll, you we'll, know, we'll get to Doug Adam in a second, looked yeah. really. You look great. That, that's just the thing. It was. Um, it, I was like, wow. That like just seeing everybody w with what they did in that short amount of time was pretty impressive, dude. Yeah, because so, six weeks typically you can. I mean, how much can you expect? You it's know, it's not a whole lot, to, right? Yeah, decipher. But like three, a big change. three point something percent. 
is the, your pictures tell a different story, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I lose fat a lot. Obviously, Maybe my face and you know, and like my arms and legs and stuff got like a lot of uh, definition. But yeah, it's my midsection's always like the. That's but well, the very last even thing. when Jessica came the other day, didn't she tell you? She's like, "Whoa, you look so different." Because mm-hmm. it must be your face. I think that's what it is, and and most people, and that's on the Instagram. You know, a lot of people notice that because I'll take a pic and like my face is just like you know, like super <laughs> like chiseled down to my jaw again I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah it is kind of noticeable yeah and then uh adam you dropped what was your percent you uh, started at 16 something yeah i was at 16 7 and then i dropped down to 13.2 so 3.5 percent i dropped down i lost uh 7.7 pounds of fat and added eight pounds of muscle your, your that's weight basically stayed the you, same you killed it you, you, well this i what, what, what i'm most because your weight didn't change exactly it was, it i did not change point two difference in your picture you could see a big ass difference too mostly in your in your waist yeah yeah i wasn't i I like your back picture better though well this is so this is also why i don't like the front before and afters only that we took because i i've always known this and i've said this on my instagram those that have been following me for a long time when i used to compete was i have a lot of inconsistency on like how much water i'm holding or not or if i have a pump or i don't on on my front like i tend Mm -hmm. to that tends to fluctuate a lot my back is very consistent. Like my back, I feel like I can look at my back, you know, and and watch it change and it give me and give me a really good idea if I'm heading in the right direction. So I've always kind of and I tell people this that I think everybody is unique. I think everybody has areas on their body that is consistent with the way it it loses body fat or gains it. And learning about your body and finding that area for you that you should pay attention to. It is interesting to see the the genetic differences. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's going to be very different. Because it all came off your lower back. Yeah, based you, on those pictures. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. really see you could really see that, right? You can tell how much my waist came in and and this and then also the development of my back. So I just feel like my back has always been my what I call my north star when I'm trying to use as a guide to am I Now, um, in my opinion, and you let me know if you think I'm right about this cuz you know your body better than anybody, obviously. But I feel like you definitely put on muscle, but I feel like a majority mm-hmm. of the muscle you put on was in your legs. I feel like your upper legs and I can see uh, and maybe because before you weren't able to push yourself as hard because you're Achilles. Yeah, Achilles. But yeah. your, your upper thigh, you gained, your whole body gained, but your legs are very different. Well, I definitely think that my- Which you can't see in the before now. Right. I think my legs uh, for sure, and the reason why that is was because when I was, I got my shoulder hurt, so I had a small, a slight s- setback. I had two small setbacks. Other than that, I think my, if I would treat this like a prep, was flawless. Like I, um, I left no room for error. I calculated everything. I tracked everything. I followed through and executed on my workouts. I increased volume like I was supposed to. Um, I did have a small setback when I got sick for a couple of days, and then and then the shoulder injury. What stayed consistent all the way through that was my leg training the most. My leg training, I was able to get after that the most. Um, and I was the most consistent with that over my period of time where I was low testosterone because bare minimum, uh, I, I might not go do a chest day or do an arm day, mm-hmm. but I would go squat. When I was caring about my hormones, my my legs were something that I would, or at least squatting and deadlifting is what I was doing. So I think I had a little momentum there already with the legs, so I was able to really scale the volume there. But overall, I mean, it, <clears throat> I mean, it was uh, it was exactly what I expected. What I tried to do. Those that um, and I had a lot of people ask me and DM me about protocol. Maybe you didn't listen to the first episode, but I I pretty much followed what I said I was going to, uh, not in the order of like. I, so I originally said I was going to go two two two, where I'd go two weeks of a cut, two weeks of a bulk, and then two weeks of a cut within that six week period. Um, I didn't do that exactly like that, but I undulated it that way, right? Mm-hmm. Where I was kind of focusing for a good five or six days of, of a calorie increase, and then I would go to a, a calorie deficit and then go to a calorie increase. And I did that over the six-week period. And it, it, it calculated out to about that where I was spending – you know, two weeks mm-hmm. of cutting and then two weeks of of bulking. And that was because I knew that going into this competition that I had no business really trying to just get shredded because I know my metabolism isn't where it should be. Like I'm normally roaring and it has 4,000 calories. I can eat anything less than that my body loses. I wasn't there. And, and I knew it like the last week, you know, I was really frustrated because I could tell 
when I went to the last, the coming into the last week, when I cranked up the deficit, you know, I was anticipating my body to really drop uh, fast. In fact, I was ready to increase calories back in and, and reintroduce because I was going to drop too fast because this is what happens to me when I compete, when I've built my metabolism all the way up and then I start to reduce, I just start to plummet. And it didn't happen. I stalled. My body was staying really the same, and which ended up probably working in my benefit because I held on to muscle really well. But my, I was sometimes having 2,200 or 2,400 calories. Which for you is low. Very low. Like that's yeah. a, I would only maybe let one day happen like that where I was running two, three days in a row like that. And my body was like barely yeah. moving. So I know that I'm, I was not in a state to mm. be aggressively cutting. So I was just as focused mm. on muscle. And, yeah. and and then Doug, I I have to say your pictures were dramatic. Probably the of the ones we took from that front, yeah. your, your pictures look like a yeah, like the know, ones they put in advertisements. Wise, yeah, genetic wise, his abs are like ridiculous. He had right? no abs, yeah. and then you had abs yeah. in six weeks. <laughs> yeah, he's Mr. What, Ab guy. What did your percent change? Well, according to this, uh, I started at fourteen point nine and went down to nine point three. <laughs> Holy shit! That's pretty good. That's a five good. and a half pound f- a five and uh, a weight yeah. change. Yeah. So your body weight went down five and a half pounds total. Yeah, and you went down four. That's a what is it? Four point something percent. Four point nine down to nine point three. So that's over five. Over five percent body fat. And loss. you were just consistently running Maps Anabolic, is what you're telling me, right? Yeah, Maps Anabolic. I did abbreviated full cycle of that and then i i kind of interchanged uh focus sec- sessions with trigger sessions mm. he, was now, pretty, he was pretty much mirroring all my workouts yeah. <laughs> you were doing I, maps I was I, copying adam I saw, I, I, so <laughs> he, adam would do see, a workout and uh, i'd sneak in later and I do the same you, one. you would just add weight to the bar. I, I would catch yeah, exactly. him i would catch him in the gym I'm like i gotta you know what <laughs> this whole competition I, I wasn't worried about doug but i'm worried about doug i see him spying on me man i see what he's doing uh, hey, oh, you know funny. i learn where i can doug when you say abbreviated you got a sponge you have to explain because I think the way you put your program together was very smart. Yeah. Because you had six weeks, but MAPS Anabolic is a twelve-week a program, or, right? Or, or or a nine-week program if you just do the first three phases or whatever. So phase one strength, right? Yeah. So instead of doing the three weeks as it is written, I did two weeks of that. Phase two is hypertrophy. I did the full three-week cycle on that, and then the final one is the uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Mm-hmm which is the more high rep exercises, mm-hmm. I did one week of that. Mm-hmm. This is very, very, very yep. similar to the protocol because I, I I did the same thing, but I, I'm counting. I'm tracking my volume. So mm-hmm. I did the same concept. Slowly of, ramp mm-hmm. it up the whole time. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. like that. Started yeah. in like a strength phase for two weeks and then kind of moved over into a hypertrophy and then ramped up and into yeah. supersets at the end. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, dude. So Sal, I well, mean, I got to be honest, like you were already looking pretty great. Right, like mm-hmm. it, it. Here's the thing, dude. I didn't know how much change I would actually see, but it did look like you got significantly bigger. You know what made the biggest difference for me was uh, my gut health, 100. Mm. percent I, I, I'm pretty consistent with my diet and, and my. Well, here's the deal. I'm pretty consistent with my workouts. My diet, if it does fluctuate, what ends up happening is I end up eating out more than eating out than eating at home. And w- when I eat out, I try to make good choices, so I still stay away from foods. I have intolerances too. I'm still going to eat, you know, vegetables and meats. And if I if I order carbohydrates, it's the gluten free variety. Mm-hmm. The problem, and this was really revealing to me, really, really, because I, you guys know I, I I deal with gut issues all the time, and I'm always trying to manage it. And I've been doing those monthly fasts, which made a huge difference, made a, a massive difference. So I already was going into it feeling much better. But this highlights a, a, a big thing that I need to communicate because we do have a lot of listeners who identify with what I talk about when I say gut issues. And that's this. You don't know what oils and things they use when they cook your food. So what I found is when I ate at home and I ate chicken or steak and rice and the same kinds of foods that I would order when I go out, I still felt way better. Mm -hmm. Like my gut health was way, way better. And so I I didn't eat out that much at all. Everything I made myself, just because obviously we're in this contest and I want to, you know, I want to make sure I, I do well. Right. So my gut health was very good. As a result of that, my strength and my muscle are increasing, even though I feel like I'm reducing my calories. And it just blew me away. It's just like, God, that has such a fucking big impact on my body. Uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's eye-opening for yeah. me. And so I, I'm just going to eat at home more and more often uh, than, I, than I have in the past. Um, and, of course, uh, it saves money in my, my wallet 
Yeah, yeah, I was just well. saying because Jessica, I was talking to her. She's like, I've never seen him like so insanely dialed, you mm. know, as he as you were through this process. I believe it. So yeah, it, I think we all were just kind of in felt, that mindset. Felt a lot better. The, the when I first got tested, my bottom remember what my weight was at. It was at two. Uh, no, that one ninety four and uh, one ninety four and body fat was at fourteen, and then I ended at one ninety one, uh, at one ninety one point eight, and then I ended up with nine point eight percent body fat. Um, that you know the tests we use, we do have to say is because we posted this on the forum and, and there was a little bit of like, oh, what kind of testing did you use this and that? We use the same testing from beginning to end, so there's the yeah. consistency with uh, with the right. testing. Right, we've talked Just about this consistency. We've talked about in body tests and these DEXA scans and that, that. There's lots of room for error. The point yeah. of that was for us just to have another non-biased consistent measurement from something besides just yeah. unfortunately we don't have a bod pod in studio right right, right. Yeah, so yeah. i i don't even I, when we did the first test i think everybody was like i don't know if i'm really that percentage or not and this is what i tell people because I, I think it's really funny when people get so hung up on the these little details like i've been using this shitty in-body test for a very long time and it's a it's an incredibly useful tool just like the fitbit is mm-hmm but I don't look at my Fitbit and go like, oh, it says that, yeah. you know, I'm supposed to burn, thir- it says I burn 4,700 calories, therefore I could eat 4,700 mm-hmm. calories. I don't use it like that. Yeah, I to use the it- number, you're like matching no, those. No, no, it's, I, I'm looking at it, the overall theme of it. And so I, and I think I'm the only one that did this with this in-body test. So I measured all the way through. So, and this is how I do it when I compete is I go back every two weeks. I normally give myself a two week time so I can be consistent with something. And then I measure and all I'm looking at is a major red flag. You know, I go in there consistently first thing in the morning, I measure it. And if you look at my graph, there's this, you know, real slow 0.7 to 1% drop every week. You know, that's about what I was, what I was dropping uh, or every, every two weeks even, which is very, very realistic, very, very normal. I if a 0.5 to a 1% drop is very doable, especially somebody who's deconditioned. And what I'm looking at is I'm watching my weight. Am I kind of keeping my weight the same? And is, is the body fat reducing in, in the direction and at the speed that it should be? And if there's anything way up or way down on any of that, I use that as an indicator of, oh, okay, I probably cut too hard or I probably increase too much. Not like a, I'm not hanging on the percentage of what it actually says. I'm using it as, as feedback. And I think that's how these tools should be used versus what I see going on with the forum right now and everybody debating and talking about this stuff. It's like, well, it's because they're objective numbers. And so people are going to debate, you know, specific numbers. This percent went this way and this number went that way. And the, and the truth is of all the the types of tests you can do to measure body composition, Bioelectric, and we've talked about this, we've, we've probably mentioned this throughout our history of podcasting at least 20 times, because we always get that question, what's the most accurate body fat test? Uh, bioelectric impedance is the, it's the most inaccurate, and it also, the, it can change based on a lot of different factors, and so you got to keep that in mind if you use something like this to track yourself. Ideally, you'd want to use something like underwater weighing, which is very inconvenient. Yeah, or you just want to be consistent with this, which is what I teach, which is get up at ten, the, it, oh, the store opens at 10 a.m., measure it first thing in the morning, measure it dry, me- measure it with no food in your system, and it'll actually read mm-hmm. pretty pretty consistent for you. But if you start you know, measuring it in the evening time, in the afternoon time, fed, not fed, drank water, body pumped up, like... Hundred percent, it's going to go all over the place. So yeah, it's the consistency of one the- thing that I noticed on it, which I found was interesting, and it, maybe it's unique to the in body. Is if you have this was very strange. Now, I if I have a shirt on or off, it would actually measure you lower yeah. with the shirt off. And I wonder if this particular machine is more um, uh, sophisticated than the typical bioelectric impedance, because typical bioelectric impedance just takes weight and and then the the measurement with their whatever the, the machine uses this one may subtract anything that it doesn't think is muscle and count that also as fat or water or something else i found it very interesting probably and again that's as so why you should weigh this wear the same clothes yeah the same, same if you did it with a shirt off you should have done it with a shirt off again like that's mm-hmm. i mean just same everything yeah same everything same time yeah. same food intake and it'll actually give you a very good feedback on what's going on it's yeah. how i used it for this competition i was adjusting my calories and my training based off of the feedback i was getting every two weeks and it worked beautifully for me. Yeah. But if you try and fuck with it and manipulate it, absolutely these things can be all over the fucking board. But addressing what some of the forum people think, 
No, you're an idiot if you think those numbers are completely way off. I'll tell you right now, I've done this a million times for a show. The, um, the To gain eight pounds of muscle and to lose seven pounds of fat in six weeks sounds crazy. And it would be crazy if you were talking to me after two years into my competing when I was super consistent to do that after that. But to the place that I'm currently at right now, for sure that I expected that. Well, and that's just it. We we got it. I mean, this is an important thing to cover because some of these results, well, all of them were remarkable. But I think when you look at the circumstances under them, they make perfect sense. And some of the yeah. circumstances include, and I hate to say this because I don't want to sound like you know an asshole, but some of the circumstances include, you know, the people doing this have a lot of experience and know exactly which levers to pull yeah. and which ones, which buttons to push. And when you know that and you take it very seriously, you can manipulate on a day-to-day basis and get your body to change. Now, when you add on top of that, going into a contest, either deconditioned or maybe not having been worked out consistently or like in my case, having my gut health make such a, which really shocked me at how big of an impact it had on on just how I felt, even though I talk about it all the time, it's still shocking to experience it. Then you can see some of the results can be relatively typical, but it's not as atypical as people think. I've seen clients do this, especially beginners, when they're really focused and really on point with everything that they're doing, especially initially. No, yeah. I, I've told clients this since day one. Like It's very realistic to expect a half a percent of body fat change per week. So when yeah. you think of that, a half a percent over six weeks is about 3%. Everybody in here- Everybody was between three, three to four. Three and four is yeah. it. And you can you can account for that extra 1% for the air of probably taking shirts off and, and trying it multiple times. Like well, other and it than, just, and I don't know, and the results sort of make a lot of sense to me anyways, just because of the fact that like you can get to the, you know, the minute details of like all those like numbers and factor them in and like really be, you know, detailed on another level versus like- like I'm, and I know, like you know, innately, like that wasn't going to be me going into this competition, anyways, because dude, like I have way too much other things to manage. So for me to like really uh, take on, you know, the responsibility, I had to simplify the whole process, mm-hmm. right? So me simplifying the whole process, like getting the results I wanted, was all I wanted. Well, here's and that good, was great. Here's some good questions, right? Like how many, how often were you working out consistently before the contest, and how right. was your diet in comparison before and after? Dramatic, yeah, dramatic difference. Right. Same thing with Doug's and Adams and pretty much everybody else. Yeah. So you know, you make it's, those. It's the big movers, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the big mover, but you can tighten those screws even further, which you see with you and Adam, where it's like you, you know, you can get to a fucking fine detailed where it's going to produce an even greater result, and so you know that just makes sense. Yeah, it's pretty. And now we did take pictures, and we're going to put them in the forum, right, so people can kind of see. And I guess they're going to judge. You yeah. guys, we all decided they're going to sure. they're going to tell us who won the contest. Yeah, they're going to tell us. I mean, I know I won, and then Doug came in second. If, if we were, <laughs> if we're, I mean, it's, it's well, percent. I it's mean, pretty obvious. It's hard. But. It's hard. <laughs> well, well, it's got a pretty dramatic yeah. uh, uh, different yeah, photo it's there. It's pretty. Though. Uh, and percentage wise, he lost a huge percent. P- total pounds, he's a smaller guy, so that's hard to say. But uh, yeah. percentage wise, he went down. But with number, 5%. numbers and pictures. Yeah, they let the forum uh, decipher that. Yeah, for sure. but yeah. I'll tell you what, everybody did. Even Enzo, if you look at his before and after, oh, he did great. Very impressive, seventeen-year-old kid going to school yeah. and figuring all that out. So, so if you're not on a forum, sorry. No, it looks. It's, <laughs> it's, it's. I think. I think overall, I think everybody did exactly what. I, I mean, what I was most impressed with, what I anticipated for all of you, was to lose muscle. It's really difficult for somebody to 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 add muscle and lose body fat. I think it's. Uh, but then again, it's just a testament to the professionalism and the level that everybody's at in this room is to be able to, you know, reduce body fat and increase muscle mass. Well, are, was everybody stronger at the end than they were in the beginning? Oh, yeah. 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 Course. So was I. Yeah. That's crazy. Like to be able to get stronger and get leaner, that yeah. is the best, absolute best well, especially scenario. Especially when I started eating carbs again. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And you got that little power, oh, great. power boost of strength. I plan to continue just so our audience knows. I'll commit to that. Now right you're now. reverse dieting. Right. So, well, what I would, and I'll tell you what, I, so, and this goes to like the dunking thing, like, you know, manipulating this thing. Like, I know that if I were to measure now this week, I'm going to measure way better because I can already see in my body, I was, I was needing the calories. Mm hmm. I'm back over 3,000 calories in the, my workout. My physique is all filled Feel out. Yeah. Better. Oh, yeah. When I look at the picture that we took, the before and afters, 
I can tell right away just because how much I've been doing that. I mean, I'm flat. I'm really, really flat. I don't look good at all. And you can tell the way my sh- my front shoulders caved in. And when I when I'm filled completely, you can see my delts come out, my chest, my upper chest comes out. Dude, so. I don't even know what happened to my before picture. I'm like standing cricket in the yeah. first one. The first one, like, I'm like I leaning in for that one. Then the second one, you're coming <laughs> at the camera. Like, yeah. yeah, I think it fixed all. <laughs> Fixed all my imbalances. It just goes second. to show you how much time and effort they put into the before and afters for a lot of the stuff that they use for It's marketing. the same picture, yeah. same background. I think I'm even wearing the same pants. I think we're all exactly the same yeah, as we were. same stance. So you can actually see for reals. Because, you know, too, when you see before and afters on, on yeah. advertisements, there's a lot of trickery oh, dude, going if on. If I had more shading and you know lighting, that would have helped. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm pretty like white, you know, going into it. Yeah. So it's like it's tough. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna continue also mainly because I haven't felt this good. Yeah. In such a long time, and so I'm just gonna keep not eating out. I can't believe how big of a difference that made. But I mean, I'm yeah. so sensitive, and but it's the fucking oils and shit that they must use when they cook. For sure, they're not using quality high quality ingredients. Of I always not. I always notice a huge difference. That's how like even when I'm when I'm getting ready for a show, there if I if I go eat out, like there's only a certain amount of time that I allow myself to do that in the prep. Like so the first couple weeks I'll follow macros and I'll measure whatever they're feeding me. And I'll try and guesstimate, mm-hmm. but once I get to the final four weeks, like I eat yeah. everything from home, like because I need to know exactly what's in there, and it always makes a huge difference. And it's like, see, that's so crazy. They're telling me there's this, this, and that in there, and I'm accounting for it. But then I know right away every time I switch to cooking at home, dude. I'll like, tell you what, like, and this isn't like I know we don't have like a sponsor lined up as far as commercial goes for Butcher Box or anything, but. Literally, like this whole entire like six weeks, like I've been living off of it, and it like I felt the healthiest like I had mm. felt in a long time, and like zero heartburn, zero uh, grogginess in the morning. Like I was like, you know, had energy, but like, you know, the, it was the calories w- which really was the the challenge for me. Is I I noticed like a substantial drop in performance as far as like not having enough calories, but you know, like reintroducing just rice. Like I, like I felt like I, I finally was uh, at, at a place I used to feel like in mm-hmm. college and before that in high school where, you know, I had that kind of um, clean energy and my mm-hmm. body was all working, you know, together. And so, yeah, I'm not motivated to just go right back in to, to, to eating shit and drinking all the time. It, like for me, it's like an, like I'm going on vacation. I'm going through this process. I'm not going to get as crazy as you guys probably would think. You want to maintain it. Yeah, I just yeah. want to. I want to maintain it. Well, all the when you eat out, all the oils that we use, I think that they use are the word like Whole Foods. When you look at the Whole Food, you think oh, Whole Foods is healthy. Look at their the the oils that they use to make their pre prep food. It's all canola oil. Yeah, that's very inflammatory in the body, and for for some people, it's not gonna. You're not gonna feel very. Speaking good. Speaking of oils, what's with the the hemp oil you got? Dude, hanging we got the a studio? new. We got a new sponsor. Uh, they produce very, very high quality hemp oil that's high in CBD. Now, here's the thing: I'm I'm always really skeptical of this stuff just because I was around it forever. And the hemp thing, how do we know? Like, because uh, I know that like one of the hustle now is in this, this. This is a big hustle right now in it's, our space. It's so popular. We right? called the CBD thing mm-hmm. because it has some great positive <laughs> benefits. Now everybody's going to do it. And the next the thing you're going to see the new magic. Pill. Well, the pixie dust, pixie dusting with with it, where you you extract it from hemp. But then the amount of like your C- real CBD that is actually beneficial to the body, you're not even getting close to that. No, you want a decent dose of CBD to in order to reap the benefits of it. What and, does that look like? Uh, it could be anywhere between five to fifty, uh, you know, milligrams per per dose. Like the higher doses are more of the for medicinal therapeutic doses. For for example, uh, like the studies they're doing with, you know, these these forms of epilepsy where these kids are having seizures and CBD is helping them. They're taking fifty to hundred milligrams a day. Most of the CBD products that I've seen on the market, you're lucky if you're getting one milligram or half a milligram per serving, and the ones that are five milligrams per serving are costing you tons and tons of money for them. So right. it's expensive to produce, which which is kind of the problem. And the, and here's what I hate about it, because CBD has real has real benefits. And and the way it works is it's it's interesting. It it helps your body's natural endocannabinoid system work better. So it gets your own, it increases your own circulating levels of endocannabinoids. So your body 
uh, it modulates its immune system better. Modulating meaning your immune system doesn't become hyperactive and get autoimmune issues or too depressed. Um, it lowers inflammation because a well-functioning endocannabinoid system monitors and, and modulates inflammation. And I keep using the word modulate because you have anti-inflammatories and then you have pro-inflammatories. But the reality is you want your body to have, to have the appropriate levels of inflammation. If mm -hmm. we eliminate inflammation completely out of your body, that's also bad. For example- well, inflammation is the yeah, first signal grow. to adapt, right? Yeah. It, you, you have to. So this is why when they do studies on athletes that take uh, like ibuprofen, ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. you know, before and during and after their events, they find over time more brittle joints, you know, more injuries and less muscle- because you need a certain amount of inflammation to signal the body what to do. It's, it's, it's nested. That's why your body makes these inflammatory markers. Now, when inflammation is run rampant, then it causes lots of damage in the body. And the, one of the jobs of the endocannabinoid system is to make sure that your inflammatory response is appropriate. So it doesn't hammer down inflammation like a drug does. It makes your body, it promotes that, that appropriate level so you're healthier. And that's why CBD is so good. And CBD, by the way, doesn't attach to the CB1 or CB2 receptors. It, again, it positively affects how your body uses its own endocannabinoids. Now, what company is it that you really like? Because I know you've been, you're the one that's been talking to these guys for a long time. I know you were, it's been fucking, what, six plus mm -hmm. months. I know you were back and forth and you wanted to see all kinds of studies and you wanted to talk to the CEO. Like, who Ned, is Ned. Ned is the company that we're going to work with. I got on the phone with the guys. First off, they are very purpose driven, which we, everybody mm -hmm. we work with, we want to make sure this is pur purpose yeah. driven. One of the founders of the company's mom had a uh, form of cancer, and instead of doing the chemo and, and radiation, decided to go natural means. And one of the things that she used, and I do want to put a disclaimer, it's not approved for cancer treatment or anything like that, but if you go uh, and look up your own research, you can see that cannabinoids have a very interesting effect on cancer. And one of the things that she did was use CBD, and she got remarkable results. And so that's one of the reasons why they created this particular company to produce this high quality CBD products. The other thing too is they, and I talked to them about this on the phone. When I was on the phone with them, I said, hey, how much, how much cannabinoids in there are in there per, per bottle? Like how do we know what's in there? Because one of the things I hate about some of these other CBD companies is you'll get the bottle and it'll say, you know, 100 milligrams of, of you know, uh, hemp oil. Okay, well that's nice, but I need to know What's in that oil? I mm -hmm. want to see what the because what we're trying to do is get the active ingredients or the 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 active constituents that give you the the, the results that you're looking for. So they've actually broke it down. If you go on their website, which is uh, I think it's let me see what's their website, Doug? Is it uh, hello ned hello ned dot com forward slash mind pump? Okay, hello, hello ned dot com forward slash mind pump. You can click on there and it'll tell you how many active cannabinoids are in their bottle. So they have like their small bottle. In the total bottle is uh, 252 milligrams of CBD, one full dropper, 10 milligrams of active cannabinoids. Then they have the stronger, the stronger bottle, which is 25 milligrams of active cannabinoids per serving, 630 milligrams of CBD per bottle, and then the strongest one is 50 milligrams of active cannabinoids or 1,260 of CBD alone. So they have three different levels of the strength. Yes. Now, now how would you recommend a, the, a consumer that wants to use it? Like, who would use it for what thing? So here's the thing. CBD is this new catch thing. It's the catchphrase or this new supplement, and you're seeing it in fucking everything. There's yeah. CBD protein, CBD pre-workout, CBD... Is there CBD They're water? They're comboing it with a lot of things. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Uh, uh, CBD is great to modulate your immune system. So for people with autoimmune issues... For people with infl uh, inflammation, it's also very, very good for anxiety. So it's one of those things if you take it, it's not psychoactive. So if you took it, you wouldn't get high. Right. It's derived from hemp. It, it is, not, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's no THC in it. But you take it and you just feel calm. You yeah. feel good and you feel calm. I would recommend this for people either at night or during the day uh, for overall health. Now, CBD was an integral part of me initially healing my but gut. how would i decide if i should do the really strong one or like the mild one is it like who who who's what better server now you made the like if it's someone, more medicinal like you're like i have anxiety or epilepsy or something crazy you like go that. with it and again i'm not we're not making any medical claims here. i want to put that disclaimer but yes if you're looking for the medicinal effects you go with the strongest one mm -hmm. if you just want therapeutic every day you know uh, enhance your body's endocannabinoid system to work properly whatever 
or better, then I would go with the with the smaller dose. But try it out and, and see what you feel. This is a legit company. Most of the CBD that's they've done some studies too, by the way, where they've taken all these CBD products and independently studied them and found that some of them had no yeah, like c- not even five percent. Yeah, had none, no CBD in them. Some of them had something else. And this company is is legit. It's made in Colorado. They've got some of the best cannabis and laws over there. Um, and again, it's legal because it's made uh, from hemp. So good, very, go. very, yeah, Check very, very good product. Boom. Absolutely. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from J. Johnson35. After seeing your transformation results, how did you manage to build muscle while losing fat? Mm. I've always thought that with a caloric deficit, it would be a given to lose size if you aren't a new lifter. Great question. Yeah, By the, yeah. Listen, if you're, uh, you listen to this podcast, this is what I want you to do uh, after you're done listening. Look up the Colorado experiment. This was a... This was an experiment that where, where Dr. Arthur Jones, who's the creator of Nautilus Equipment, took a bunch of volunteers through his special workout regime to advertise his Nautilus Equipment. Now, the reason why I want you, and by the way, this was all videotaped. It was pictures were taken. It was reg, it was like these are real. There was nothing fake about it. But the reason why I want you to look at this is you will see the most insane results you've ever seen in your entire life, and so, so unbelievable that people questioned it for years. But it was all documented. One of the guys in that study, there you go, there's a picture of it, that one of the yeah. guys in that study was Casey Viator. Now, in this study, I believe, was conducted in the 1970s, uh, I believe it was. Casey Viator was one of the was the youngest Mr. Universe, I think, or Mr. America um, ever to win. This was a bodybuilding contest that was quite popular back then. So he was a pro bodybuilder, obviously great genetics, mm-hmm. could build lots of muscle, and he took anabolics. Now, before going into this study... Let, this is this is widely known. Casey stopped working out and got off his gear. So he walked into the study, kind of small, goes into the study, deconditioned, lots of muscle memory, gets back on gear. That's the part that speculated. Some people say he didn't. Some people say he did. But he gained an insane amount of muscle in a short period of time. I don't know if, Doug, you can find there how much muscle he gained in that short period of time. But that right there was unbelievable there were other people in the study that you could see, and you can see what they did as well because they went in under those types of That's circumstances. Ex- this is exactly the situation that I went into with our current competition, was knowing that even being a guy who was on anabolics before and is not, could I still go in and make this great of a change? And What, what do those numbers say, Doug? His overall mass gain in 28 days, and this is this was documented with 63 pounds and i mean people think this was just insane wow but again when you're dealing (laughs) when you're dealing with muscle memory and back on some juice i've seen this personally i've seen uh, like uh, kevin lavrone used to get skinny in the off season and then when you compete he would blow up i could totally manipulate i mean we what i just did right now was natural if i was on anabolics it would have been it would have been double that it would have been insane yeah it would have been double that double that for sure i mean look so you know, I I walked around uh, during competitive times from 197 to uh, I think 206 was the kind of highest I got. So that was my professional uh, weight that I kept my my muscle mass at. So I had 197 to 206 pounds of muscle on my body consistently through all of my competing time. And now what it took to get up to that was years and years and years and years of training, and then consistently you know, increasing volume at the amateur level to eventually getting the professional level to training seven days a week. And that, and then, so from, and then that point, it was very incremental. Like for what it took for me to go from 197 to 206 was the course of two years. But when I just now came off of anabolics, when I tore the Achilles, I dropped all the way down to 170 something in lean mass. So I know my body is used to carrying 190 to 200 pounds of lean mass on me. So there was no doubt in my mind that once I began consuming the right amount of calories, increasing my training volume, that I was going to pack on the muscle. Like that was, duh, I knew that. Now the real 
art was, can I add muscle, then lose a little bit of body fat, add muscle and lose a little bit of body fat. And absolutely there is. Now, you can do like what we've talked about where you go like a two-week bulk and then a two-week cut, two-week bulk, two-week cut. But there's little things that I would do just because the, the body doesn't necessarily work on the, like on this 24-hour clock the way we think about it. And so I would do this. Like when we have our foundational days, right? So a foundational day for an average person who doesn't know what or follow-up maps is, is a, a, a hard training day. You know, it's a, it's a you're hitting all your major muscle groups, your compound lifts. So when I trained a foundational day or a hard training session, I made sure in the next 24 hours I was well fed. And the theory behind that is this. I just lifted really hard. I probably did a little bit of damage. I've sent a major signal to my body that it needs to adapt and grow and build muscle. That is most crucial time, in my opinion, that I want to feed it. So I was feed from the moment after training for the next 24 hours, I, my calories were good. Mm-hmm. I was getting a good amount of calories. I was hitting my protein intake that I need to. Now that I would have, then I would have some lower calorie days. If I was going to have a lower calorie day, it would be on a day not after I just did mm-hmm. that. It would be on the second or the third day from a, a hard training session like that when it, when it was probably less likely that my body needed those additional calories. Mm-hmm. So you, and then that's how I would start to lean yeah. out. And, it, and it's important to, to understand something here. Okay. If, if your body wants to lose fat and wants to build muscle, it can happen pretty rapidly, but that's the key. Your body has to want to do those things. Now, if you're dialed in and pushing everything all the time to where diet's perfect, training's perfect, sleep is perfect, and you're pushing, 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 and then you want to see where you can progress from there, well, you're already kind of pushing the pedal to the metal, and you're maximizing everything to begin with. When you're going into something already having lost muscle or maybe not working out like you normally do, your body's waiting, and you send that signal, and it, yeah. wants, to, it wants to respond. And look, here's the deal. I'll tell you what, man. Most, weight, most lean body mass I've ever gained in my entire life, I gained over 16 pounds over the course of a summer – from the age of 15 to 16. Now, why did that happen? Well, I trained really hard, but I was also going through fucking puberty mm-hmm. and my body wanted to gain muscle. So results can be quite dramatic if you see where you're starting from and then where you're going. The other thing too is a lot of times when people apply nutrition and exercise, the nutrition at the the training isn't perfect because most people don't have you know 15 or 20 years of training under their belt or training themselves. So there's always issues there. People either will overwork or underwork or not apply the right stuff. And the other part of it too is with diet, people don't realize how big of a difference it makes from eating pretty good to eating perfect. Yeah, That makes a huge difference. Huge. And when I say perfect, I literally mean I ate for me personally, and I know Adam did even less than this. For me personally, I had over a six-week period a grand total of two meals that were not, you know, where I was really scheduling. And one of them is when we went to the House of Prime Rib. And another one was, I forgot where else it was. It was like one of the- You went to Napa it. and you had some wine. That's, that's it. I teased you. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Two times. Yeah. Everything else was like ideal. Before that, it was good. I was eating intuitively, so I'm not unhealthy. But it wasn't It wasn't perfectly, perfectly dialed in. So yeah. I think that's why you can see some of that. Yeah, so, you can hit a sweet spot. I mean, it does exist. If you have both those factors, like you said, to dialed to the very uh, degree where you have experience in both like nutrition and training, and you know what that looks like as far as like the perfect storm mm-hmm. between the two of those together. Yes, you can you can gain you know lean muscle and lose body fat, and, but it but it does take an insane amount of experience. And it's important that we say that nobody in our in uh, among all of us, I don't. Don't know any all of us did everything right nobody starved themselves excessively nobody was taking substances to assist themselves this was a performance enhancement drug free competition nobody was doing anything to damage their body we all did you know did things kind of the healthy and the right way um and i, I want to be i want to be clear with that now in terms of if you're listening right now and you're thinking like oh shit i want to make crazy gains and crazy losses in a six-week period I'll tell you what, it's not even ideal. Even the way even the way I can say I did it, I still wouldn't consider it perfect because I would have stretched it out. I still pushed it a little bit too right. far, you know what I'm saying? Like I was I felt like I was just gaining that transitional momentum to then carry into the next 6 weeks of like all oh, real change, you know? So it's it's it was a good start. You know, and I felt like it was a good, you know, like getting, it was like inconsistencies to like fully consistent now. I I think that I could go another six weeks and duplicate 
about exactly the same process, which I'll hopefully do this all for you guys so you guys can see this. After that six weeks is when it would become very incremental and small for me. Because if you figure... You figured you had a 12-week period. Right. So if yeah. I go another another six weeks, the, the max I would expect myself to add is another seven to eight pounds. But then now I'm getting up to my 190-something in muscle. Now, now you're I'm, really shredding. Right. Now, well, and then now I'm also hitting kind of my peak of lean body mass that I've ever had before. Yeah, so going past that... Going past that yeah. is going to be a grind. Yeah. So getting, uh, yeah, getting yeah. above that number for me, I know would be... A, a major grind. I would still have room body fat wise because I'm still carrying a lot of fat on me that I've that more so than I've had. I've been all the way down to where I had like yeah. five total pounds. Of yeah, fat and on that's me. a good point because I don't think anybody ended the six week contest better than they'd ever been in their entire lives. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. were kind of going back to where we our bodies have been before. That's optimal. why. That's why people yeah. are seeing such crazy results or what they're the numbers that they think could aren't real or fake or way off. No, they're not. I mean, we could argue the test being. Well, you can look at the. You can see. You can look if you're especially if you're in the form. You can see in the pictures. You can see clearly. Okay, that's real. There's yeah, no yeah. gain muscle. It's, yeah, yeah, there's no bullshit. And there. it's dramatic because let's be honest. We were all nowhere. I mean, we were all in some of the worst shape we've been in since we've been podcasting. Yeah. I mean, we've been fucking busy. Like that was part I, of the motivation for the contest. Yeah, exactly. That, that <laughs> it's exactly what totally. the motivation was. I think we all felt that energy that like, hey, we're a health and fitness podcast. We should be trying to carry ourselves in mm. lower lower body fat percentage, even though we're all, I, I mean, when you look at even the befores, everybody's in a healthy position, but we could be in a, in a, in a, a leaner position and show people that we have that control to be able to do that. Yeah. But it's not unrealistic at all, considering I know where everybody's level of training yeah. was at and what they're capable of. I've seen everybody in this room. I know what Sal, Justin, and Doug look like when they are consistently lifting and dieting strict, and they're I'm watching them bring their bringing their Tupperware in. They're eating out of it. I know what that looks like. Versus, hey, we're going to Luna today. Hey, we're going to Chipotle tomorrow. Hey, we're eating out. We're on the road. Oh, we're having some drink Moscow mules tonight. Like that was all going on, and we've had the ability to you know maintain our our health and stay healthy. But if we want the elite level of conditioning. We know the exact steps it takes to get yep. there, and we all well, did I'll, that. Well, I'll tell know? you, for me, one of the, again, I'm going to say, just reiterate the, what, what an eye opener because you know I was, I, I'm always pretty consistent with my workouts and never really stopped them. They were always pretty consistent, and my diet's always pretty good. It's not the best, but we're really surprised. And I know when I went into it, I thought, okay, this is going to be difficult for me because I can't ramp my training up too much. I'm already training pretty good. What do I do? And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can just make myself, my gut as healthy as possible because I know it has an impact. Mm -hmm. I did not realize how much of a fucking impact it had on... And now here's the thing that really shocked me. Yes, my body changed. I got leaner. I built a little bit of muscle. I was stronger at the end of it than I was going into it and all that stuff. What really shocked me the most was my, my mental capacity. I felt during that six-week period of time, I produced and wrote more content than I had in the previous six months. And part of that is just when you're healthy, or at least in my case, when I'm healthy, I feel sharper. I feel smarter. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't have as much anxiety. I feel way, way better. And it's just it, it just strengthens what I preach all the time. Oh, I had no more lulls, man. Yeah. Like I'd come home and I, it's not like, a, uh, like you get that sort of lull when you're done from the day. And I've just kept going, man. I had this like crazy energy all day Bro, long. What a lesson. I mean, here's the deal. We all spent more time on our workouts and more time figuring out our diets than we did before, yeah. but we were also more productive yeah, I mean, as say, a result of it. You say yeah. it all the time. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, you get back, you, I think you really do. You get another 10 X because you do that. I really do believe it's, it's crazy that when you make yourself, you know, get up extra early to get that workout in or take the extra time to prepare the meals for the next two or three days and then make sure you get the workout in consistently. It's amazing how that bleeds over into every other aspect mm -hmm. of your life. I mean, I mean, I'm in a better mood with my relationship. I sleep better. I get, I pop out of bed better. Mm -hmm. When I work, I'm more productive because I'm making sure that my steps are up and I'm staying movement and active. I get more shit done around the house. You know what I'm saying? Dude, like I got five massive projects done on the house. Right. right. And I mean, <laughs> five, five. That's five more than I've, the roof. I think I did. Yeah, my, my whole yeah, life. tree house. <laughs> like, oh my god, I was going crazy. Yeah, yeah dude, so, I loved it. Beautiful. Next question is from Godzilla one 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 two. Can you explain the difference between focus sessions versus trigger sessions, and whether they are interchangeable within a program? Mm. You know, the beauty of one of the beauties of the Maps programs is when we create them and write them out for people, 
you definitely can you freedom. Yeah, you definitely can and should follow them as they're laid out for your first time. But we not only allow, we encourage people to modify them based on their own individual bodies. I mean, look at Doug did exactly that on this, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Doug took a program. He knew he had six weeks to get in shape. He knows how well he responds to MAPS anabolic phase one, so he started right there. He and then he scaled and then he changed out of it two weeks. So he left it. He left anabolic one or phase one early, you know, thinking trying to plan out his whole six weeks. He included focus sessions on top of the trigger sessions to build more volume mm -hmm. into it as he started to progress through. I mean, that's exactly. Uh, I mean, the, I think really I was explaining this actually last night to my nephew about all the programs because they were talking about how kind of um, how prime is a little complex for him to understand them to understand. I said, yeah, you really got to watch the videos. I said, well, really when we designed a lot of these programs, they really were to educate trainers on how to be better trainers. I mean, when you think about it, like yeah. it, it, they're, they're a tool that, that we try to make as simple for the, the average person to understand and use, which is, I, I think we did pretty well. I think we did a good, the average person can buy our programs. They can use them. They're, they're pretty simple, but there, there is, a lot of detail in the in the programming and it's the idea is to show trainers like how to train their clients when these are the objectives. Now, that being said, there's so many variables when it comes to clients and people that, yeah, absolutely, you can modify and take from this program and add this. Like, There's nothing that says you can't take a client and follow them through MAPS Anabolic or yourself. And because you know you have a lot of mobility issues, that yeah. instead of doing trigger sessions or focus sessions, you in, you interject mobility sessions from green. That's right. I, know. You I know? was actually going to use that same example because I've done that before. You know, with some people I've helped out, and you know they they're in a place where they can lift weights, but they still have like these these pending aches, pains, or like a th like. Like they need to make sure that they apply a lot of these mobility moves to reinforce their joints. And so what a great, you know, place to interject, you know, mobility sessions or even, you know, with our prime program, establish that, you know, going into, uh, you know, the, the lifts, like here's your ritual that you do on the off hours. So before you get to the gym, so there's a lot of interchangeable, uh, ways to apply a lot of our concepts. Well, this, this, this week, what, one of the things I did was. I ran a maps aesthetic type of style. One day, uh, one of my, you know, so you, you have your three major foundational days, and I was in the gym every single day. But one day was a mobility day, which would have been pulled from like a green. One day was a band day at, using bands at home, which would be like a trigger session. And then another day was inside here doing focus sessions. So, you, I mean, I took a piece from every one of the programs mm -hmm. and kind of blend them. That's why I, I think when we talk about our programs, None of us follow a single program to the exact T all the time. We're always pulling from all of yeah. them to create. Well, I think uh, to answer this, the question specifically, uh, so trigger sessions are lower intensity than focus sessions. And focus sessions are low intensity, lower intensity than a, your actual foundational workout. So your foundational workouts are your hard, heavy, your, th these are the workouts that are building the base. It's Compound really the meat movements. And yeah, meat and potatoes of your workout. Focus sessions are used in between those to work on special areas. It's a lower yeah, intensity muscle development, like specifically isolation yeah, exercises. Yeah, and you're you're getting a pump. You want to try and squeeze the muscle. Line. You're not trying to hammer the shit out of a muscle, but really just add volume. Trigger sessions are even lower intensity than that. And really, the goal of a trigger session is to give yourself kind of this full body pump and send this full body muscle building signal that's very faint. But that's enough to maintain the loud muscle building signal that you may have sent the day before with your heavy foundational workouts. Trigger sessions are done far more frequently. So typically, I'll recommend someone do tr three trigger sessions a day on their non-foundational workout days. Focus sessions, because they're a little bit more intense, you're only doing one of those a day on your non-foundational workout days. Everybody has their favorites. I think they're all a little different. Me Personally, I love... Trigger sessions. Nothing gets my body to build muscle like trigger sessions. But that being said, I could probably use uh, more mobility sessions because that's an area that I always need to work on and I tend to neglect because I don't find it as fun and as kiting as getting a pump like I would with trigger sessions. But nonetheless, all of these, these frequency builders that we plug into all of our programs are really designed to augment and amplify the foundational workouts of your MAPS programs. 
And if you take them out, if you took focus sessions out or you took trigger sessions out or mobility sessions out and you just did the, the foundational workouts, you'd still get great results. You'd still get very good results. But you would be you're blown away when you include those frequency builders. And the reason why I'm saying that is I, I oftentimes will get people who will tell me, oh, I did MAPS Anabolic and it was freaking awesome and I got great strength. And I'll ask them, how many trigger sessions did you do on your off days? I'm like, oh, I did one, maybe one. And I'll tell them, do it again, but this time do three trigger sessions a day. Let me know what happens. They're always blown away, completely blown away. So it's not something you want to skip out of the program just because it's not the meat and potatoes. It literally is the turbo that you're slapping on your V8 that you created with your foundational workout. So make sure you combine everything to get the maximum results. Next up is Evolve Fitness. What are your thoughts on alternative ways to educate children, such as homeschooling? Love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. You know, homeschooling is has exploded over the past 10 years in this mm. country. Yeah, it makes sense. It's growing tremendously. <laughs> and part of the reason for that, I think, is the availability of, uh, of education tools. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you have the internet now, so it's I can access information and teaching tools. You know Khan Academy? Have you heard of them before? Mm -hmm. So Khan Academy, this guy started with these videos on YouTube where he's teaching kids how to do math, but his teaching methods and style is so different, but also so effective that his channel exploded. Kids were using him, teachers were using him, parents were using him. Before you know it, school started uh, showing his videos in their classrooms. And now he's got these entire curriculums all based off of, you know, on the internet. Mm -hmm. And so I think that has really exploded the amount of kids that are getting homeschooled. The other thing that I think that has affected it is the the broad standardization that we are getting with our public schools to where cuz and this is one thing i hate about you know the fact that we have a federal department of education i don't think it makes any sense if you've ever worked with kids you know how each class classroom is so different and each state is probably different each classroom is different and then each child is different and when they send these these instructions from the federal you know bureaucracy that says everybody has to meet these exact same standards I don't know how, how – that's got to be so ineffective, and I feel like it handcuffs the teachers to be able to be more creative and, mm -hmm. you know, and be Approach able to – Approach it from a different perspective. Yeah, teach the kid yeah. more more towards the kid. I think homeschooling allows that, but – Yeah, there's a lot more freedom in it now, too, and I, you know, I applaud the parents that want to tackle that challenge, you know. Like, it's it's definitely a commitment, you know, to, to be able – the, the resources are there. You know, now and it, they've made it a lot easier with the internet and all these things. And there's actually ways to interact with other homeschool kids, too, which I think is, you know, another bonus to that to where, like, people in your area, like, oh, I think that's crucial. You know, you can you can interact and you can have that social element, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's the crucial part if you're going to be somebody who, so I was homeschooled for a year. I think that homeschooling uh, in alternative ways of educating, I think, is the future. And I think it's, I think it's brilliant. I think it does place a lot of responsibility on the parents. I think uh, public school allows parents to, you know, kick your kids off the school and let the let the mm. the school handle it, right? Where you know there's a lot more ownership now uh, for the parents to make sure that the kids are executing what they're supposed mm. to, that they're really accelerating at the level they should be, or hopefully even faster, because you're dictating their 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 education and what they're learning. And then there's the piece that Justin just brought out that I think is if there's a pitfall in homeschooling, at least it was when I was a kid, is the, the lack of social experiences that you can have. Now, the argument that people will make is that they, like Justin said, there's these, you know, now these meetups and these things they can do. It's actually to, quite well organized. Nowadays. Right. Yeah. So you can, you can interact. But I think nothing will ever trump that ability to, or from a social standpoint. So that let, I think that is necessary that you do that to that kid because then he's, if not, you're setting him or her up to be socially awkward without having them interact more often. But, you know, there's something to be said about going to classrooms with multiple kids and the environment and working around that that I think is, is positive. And I think that's the one drawback of homeschool is you lose a lot of that, even though they've done a great job of incorporating it, it's still not at the level that a kid would mm. be doing. Well, here, here's my opinion on it. Cause I had, so I had clients who were homes, they homeschooled their kid and they are advocates for it. And so I used to ask them these questions all the time. Mm -hmm. And first off, statistically speaking, homeschooled kids perform better than, uh, than, you know, other educated kids 
on almost every parameter that they measure. Testing, SATs, you know, income, they all perform much better. Now, a lot of there was a lot of pushback when these studies came out because they've had done, done several of them. And they said, well, there's self-selection bias. Homeschool kids tend to be wealthier, which is true, um, and maybe have you know more access to certain things. So what they did is they went in, they controlled for all those factors, and the homeschool kids still perform better. And, well, what and, the, they've also got studies that will show a smaller classroom will show all the same results also. So the, so just I think there's a lot to be said about the one-on-one -on -one attention to detail. Yeah, and yeah, that's the, my point. My yeah. point is nobody, and I, this is the argument that I hear people making all the time. If we let parents homeschool, they're not going to do as good of a job. Let the state control that. And I always look at people and say, you know, there's definitely bad parents out there, but for the most part, Parents know what's better for the kid than anybody else. That's mm -hmm. just true. They just do. And they and, want them to succeed. Like They really want them to, and, to do well. And for sure, there's some shitty uh, parents out there. For sure. But there's some shitty parents that send their kids to public schools too. But the ones that, you know, like most parents, we know what's best for our kids. We teach them according to the child rather than a huge classroom or like you're saying, Adam, it's, it's smaller. And the kid tends to dictate a little bit more when they're homeschooled. Like if you, look, if I'm homeschooling my kid and I see that they're, they just have this, you know, affinity for math, and they enjoy math. Well, why would I teach them at the at the standard of their age when they fucking love it? Let's go as far as we can. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what happens with public schools. Public schools do a, a generally okay job of educating the middle, yeah. but if you're above the middle or below, if you're the a middle, high performer. They don't really have a lot for you. They're no. fucked. The yeah. high performers yeah. in particular yeah. get really, really screwed because right. where do they go? Or low, right? No, you're right. True. It's really the middle. It really addresses the middle. The it does, and so you know the home homeschool kids tend to do a little better. But here's the drawback to it: hmm. it's not the socialization. It's not. I don't. Don't see any of that as drawbacks. The drawback I see is the time. If you're a parent homeschooling your kid, well, yeah, it's a commitment like no other, man. You, you got to schedule and plan it. Now, you take your kid to school, they do that for you. You take them, you drop them off. They, yeah. They've scheduled everything they need to do or whatever. Yeah, because even then, too, the social part, like you can, you could get them like involved in sports, like the like, mm -hmm. like, in, and and go through that process of like working as a team. I think that's really like the the biggest benefit, like you get from schools, like when you're working on projects together, yeah. you're doing things, you're communicating, because you do need that skill in order to get a job and work with other people oh, 100%. Like, yeah, yeah. So. and the way I would the way I would do it because I've thought about I tried to convince my ex to do homeschooling with my kids but neither one of us had the time or, or the energy to do that and luckily my kids are in a school that they, they seem to be thriving in but if I were to homeschool now first of all either me or my significant other need would need to be that would need to be part of their full-time job it just requires yeah. a lot of energy and stuff but the way I would do it is I would I would do classes different classes I, if I see my kid and say oh you, you really enjoy reading. We're going to put you in this reading class that I found that's really, really good. And you're going to learn your history. The next two weeks, we're going to focus on history. And you're going to do these field trips with this other homeschooling group. And, okay, now we're going to do math. I'm going to enlist in this one individual who's a, an excellent tutor for math. Who's going to, I, would, I would definitely outsource it. I wouldn't, you know, the, the, old, the old concept of the homeschooled kid where it's the parent that's the teacher the whole time. I don't think that's the ideal way. To, it wouldn't be for me. Like, yeah. my kids would not yeah. learn good math for me. I think at the you end of the day, it put it, a lot of responsibility on the parents to go that. I think if you go the extra mile, it can it can be ten times better than them going to school. Oh, yeah. uh, I think if you are lazy about it and you don't put the effort into it or you half ass it, I think you'll see. I'll you're, think you're seeing see the that. number explode in California too because of all the requirements for all the vaccines. And so now oh, yeah. one of the ways you can you, a lot of parents are saying screw it I'll just homeschool my kid if, so I don't have to get them all the vaccines mm. and stuff so you're going to start to see the growth of it Well explode. yeah and it depends when they start trying to like you know interject a lot of questionable things that they're teaching kids and whatever like yeah. based on the state of where we are as a society you know that's where that might be more appealing Exactly Next question is from podcast fan do you guys suffer from male PMS or do you have any <laughs> thoughts on this? <laughs> I'm menstruating right yeah, now. Yeah, I thought this was a funny, yeah. you know, what's funny about this. So PMS is, there's a lot of joking, you know, made around it. And I know if you bring it up, especially if you say it ever to your girlfriend or your wife, uh, yeah. you're going to be fucked. Yes. So never, yeah, never say, you're not hey, are you, yeah, any are you, sex. are you PMSing right now? It's the worst thing you could possibly say, <sighs> but it's a real, it's a real thing. And it, it, it's really the result of, you know, women's hormones dramatically shift throughout the month. They just do. They go from being able to conceive, you know, being able to conceive and carry to not being able to. And those are two different hormone profiles. And so it's natural that they're going to feel different, you know, at different times of the month. 
men's are pretty consistent. Our hormones are pretty consistent. If our sleep and diet is off, that can affect it. But it's pretty. Not, now, nonetheless, do you know? Do men get you know moods and stuff? Of course. Yeah. Of course they do. Well, I I tell you the what, man cold. I I think I have a ton more empathy for women after this last year of my life. Uh, than I ever did before because uh, you know you're right. Men's typically are very consistent unless you fucked with hormones like I did, and uh, we're trying to fix them and using different methods to try and increase my hormones and to see. I've felt I definitely know now what it feels like to have these more dramatic swings that probably women deal with more so than men. Like we're hot, cold flashes, retaining water. You know, moody. You know, not no energy to get up and do something. You know, this back and like I felt all of that during this process, and so I do have so much respect for women that put up with this and then still go about their lives and act like nothing's going on because crying at commercials, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, things like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. all that, all that good stuff. You know what? I think uh, I, I. So it's funny. I, I had I've, I've had a quite a few conversations about this with uh, Jessica, and she wrote this. She read this book called. Uh, the Period Repair Manual. It was a brilliant book. I didn't read it, but she, uh, what, one thing I love about Jessica, she'll read a book and then she'll just give me the cliff notes and so I can talk about it on the show. But, you know, one of the things about about the changing hormones is there, I think we focus so heavily on the negatives that we forget that there's positives associated with some of these hormone changes. Like, for example, for women, there's going to be typically a time of the month where you're going to have more energy to do things. There's also going to be other times of the month where you may be more sensitive but that's okay because that becomes that could become a, a superpower if it allows you to address certain things in your life that you may otherwise overlook. So there's a lot of positives and negatives. And it's, by the way, my theory as to why I think women are emotionally more intelligent than men, my theory is because they've learned how to deal with their own changing emotions much more than men have, where we're kind of like we deal with one, one speed or one grade or whatever, whereas women have to, you know, for, for up until they go through menopause, they're changing their dealing with all these changes, it makes you a very emotionally intelligent uh, person. Now, now for me personally, what affects my moods? Stress. Stress is the biggest thing. If I'm stressed out about something, I am uh, short, I'm less empathetic, mm -hmm. um, and I'm more uh, centrally focused on myself. Do you guys have, do you have like a specific like triggers like there's certain things that like that need to be in order for you or that like you need to be good or else you know that that will cause that? Do you know there's there's ones for you know what um, like just for me I know right away like you know my house being in order and clean mm. like I I just if it's in order and it's clean I'm already less stressed which will cause me to be less irritable and less likely to get pissed off or angry or whatever mm -hmm. or have PMS right that type of symptom so that's a big that's a big deal for me I also notice uh, when my finances are in order when bills are paid ahead of time when I've got a good amount of money in my bank like and and I'm doing well financially uh, that also keeps me really really good and it doesn't cause any of those things if that's off at all if I'm in debt for some reason or if I'm you know had a yeah. rough week in business or whatever something was going or I'm in a transition of moving from one company to another things like that it will really really affect my moods yeah, my kids will affect me more than anything i think if, if they're sick or if they're off or and maybe i'm just hypersensitive because now i'm you know since getting divorced now we have dual custody so i'm more sensitive to making sure that you know i'm having a, a really really positive impact on them so if i notice that they're off uh i tend to it tends to affect me very, very strongly. And I'm, I'm, and you know, Jessica reminds me like they're kids, like sometimes kids are in a bad mood too, or sometimes whatever, but it'll affect me very, very strongly. The organization aspect of it, I notice for me, similar to you, Adam, um, it's there. Uh, if I'm anxious, if I start cleaning, it feels relieving to me. Mm -hmm. Like if I see things are out and I start organizing and cleaning, I start to feel yeah, a little do bit. All the time. Do you really? Yeah. Like I, I have to, like I have to do something. You know, like if I feel like this, this buildup of stress and anxiety, like I'm okay, I'm doing things and like things that like contribute towards uh, the overall well being. Like for me, I get very affected by my, <laughs> unfortunately, because Courtney's always just so frustrated with me because I get really affected by her mood. So depending on how like her level of stress ramps up, that affects me. And then I project it right back on her instead of helping her to bring it down. So I, I'm guilty of that. Like we actually had a big fight about that this weekend. 
um, because it, it's, I don't come from a place initially of like, oh my God, how can I help? And like, you know, like acknowledge, you know, what you're, you're, you're getting like upset about and crazy about. It's more like I'm meeting that. And then, oh shit, like I got to come back and and pick the pieces back up. So, I mean, I guess a typical sort of a, you know, male thing, but like I, I, I've been working on that a lot and trying to like address like, well, okay, what are the things like, I'm always thinking about what are the things I can notch off to pre like preventatively, um, bring everybody's level down the kids, Mm -hmm. you know, my wife, like the house, like, like what are these, these things? So I just, I just start doing shit now and it just keep me busy. It's funny. I was watching this, uh, this Jordan Peterson video where he's talking about when husbands and wives uh, fight or whatever. And he's like, you know, when you get into an argument, I know many times we just want to win the fight. He goes, don't get so focused on winning because, okay, now you won and you've crushed her. You've beat her. You won the argument. Great. Now you got to be with her <laughs> for the things next- things are worse. Yeah, now you got to be with her for the next 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. that's not the point. Like, the point is yeah. to work things out or whatever. That made such a huge impact on me. Big, so. Yeah, big time. So check this out. If you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can get some of our free guides, including our fat loss guides, where we talk about a lot of the things that we used um, in the prep for this contest to get ourselves- lean we talk a lot about those things we have a hit training guide a fat loss guide and a flat tummy guide all three of them will highlight many things that we used to get in shape again it's at mindpumpfree.com thank you for listening to mind pump if your goal is to build and shape your body dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance check out our discounted rgb super bundle at mindpumpmedia.com the rgb super bundle includes maps anabolic MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.